Doom, 1993 video game. Doom, typeset as Doom in official documents and stylized as Doom in other media, is a 1993 first-person shooter, FPS, video game by ID Software. It is considered one of the most significant and influential titles in video game history for having helped to pioneer the now ubiquitous first-person shooter. The original game was divided into three nine-level episodes and was distributed via shareware and mail order. The Ultimate Doom, an updated release of the original game featuring a fourth episode, was released in 1995 and sold at retail. In Doom, players assume the role of an unnamed space marine, who became popularly known as Doom Guy, fighting his way through hordes of invading demons from hell. With one-third of the game, nine levels, Distributed as shareware, Doom was played by an estimated 15 to 20 million people within two years of its release, popularizing both the business model of online distribution and the mode of gameplay, and spawning a gaming subculture. In addition to popularizing the first person shooter genre, it pioneered immersive 3D graphics, networked multiplayer gaming, and support for customized additions and modifications via packaged files in the data archive known as WADs. As a sign of its effect on the industry, First-person shooter games from the genre's boom in the 1990s, helped in no small part by the game's release, became known simply as Doom clones. Its graphic violence, as well as satanic imagery, made Doom the subject of considerable controversy. The Doom franchise was later continued with the follow-up, 1994, and numerous expansion packs, including Master Levels for Doom 2, 1995, and Final Doom, 1996. Originally released for MS-DOS, the games have been ported to numerous other platforms. Once the game's source code was released in 1997, it spawned even more adaptations, as fans further ported the code to countless devices, even on machines that were not designed to run games. The series started to lose mainstream appeal as the technology of the Doom game engine was surpassed in the mid-1990s, although fans have continued making wads, speedruns, and modifications to the original. The franchise again received popular attention in 2004 with the release of Doom 3, a retelling of the original game using ID Tech 4, with an associated 2005 Doom motion picture. A reboot of the series, simply titled Doom and powered by ID Tech 6, was released in 2016 and focused on returning to the fast paced action of the first two games. Doom is a first person shooter presented with early 3D graphics. The player controls an unnamed space marine, later termed the Doom Guy through a series off-level set in military bases on the moons of Mars and in Hell. To finish a level, the player must traverse through the area to reach a marked exit room. Levels are grouped together into named episodes, with the final level focusing on a boss fight with a particularly difficult enemy. While the levels are presented in a 3D perspective, the enemies and objects are instead 2D sprites presented from several set viewing angles, a technique sometimes referred to as 2.5D graphics. Levels are often labyrinthine and a full-screen auto-map is available which shows the area's explored Todd Hat point. While traversing the levels, the player must fight variety of enemies, including demons and possessed undead humans, while managing supplies of ammunition, health, and armor. Enemies often appear in large groups, and the game features five difficulty levels which increase the quantity and damage done by enemies, with enemies respawning upon death and moving faster than normal on the hardest difficulty setting. The monsters have very simple behavior, consisting of either moving toward their opponent, or attacking by throwing fireballs, biting, and scratching. They will fight each other if one monster is accidentally harmed by another, though most monsters are not harmed by other monsters of the same kind. Levels can also include pits of toxic waste, ceilings that lower and crush anything below them, and locked doors which require a keycard skull-shaped key device, or a remote switch to be opened. The player can find weapons and ammunition placed in the levels or can collect them from dead enemies. Weapons include a pistol, a chainsaw, a plasma rifle, and the BFG-9000, among others. The levels also feature power-ups such as items that give health or armor points, increase the player character's maximum ammunition or health, fill out the auto-map, give partial invisibility, or allow the player to survive in toxic waste. There are also items which apply time-limited effects such as invulnerability or a berserker status. In addition to the main single-player game mode, Doom features two multiplayer modes playable over a local network, cooperative, in which two to four players team up to play through the main game, and deathmatch, in which two to four players play against each other. Online multiplayer was later made available a year after launch through the Duongo service.
Doom also contains cheat codes that allow the player to be vulnerable, obtain every weapon, be able to instantly kill every monster in a particular level, and several other abilities. Doom is divided into three episodes, Knee Deep in the Dead, The Shores of Hell, and Inferno. A fourth episode, Thy Flesh Consumed, was added in an expanded version of the game, The Ultimate Doom. The game itself contains very few plot elements, with a minimal story instead given in the instruction manual and short text segues between episodes. Just before the game's beginning, the unnamed Space Marine player character has been punitively posted to Mars after assaulting a superior officer, who ordered his unit to fire on civilians. The Space Marines act as security for the Union Aerospace Corporation's radioactive waste facilities, which are used by the military to perform secret experiments with teleportation by creating gateways between the two moons of Mars, Phobos, and Deimos. Deimos disappears entirely and something frag and evil starts pouring out of the teleporter gateways, killing or possessing all personnel. The Martian Marine unit is dispatched to investigate with the player character left to guard the perimeter with only a pistol while the rest of the group proceeds inside the base and is killed. As the last man standing, the player character fights through the onslaught of demonic enemies to keep them from attacking Earth. In Knee Deep in the Dead, he fights through the high-tech military bases, power plants, computer centers and geological anomalies on Phobos. It ends with the player character entering the teleporter leading to Deimos, only to be overwhelmed by monsters. In the shores of hell he fights through installations on Deimos, similar to those on Phobos, but warped and distorted from the demon invasion and interwoven with beastly architecture. After defeating the titanic cyberdemon, the marine discovers the vanished moon is floating above hell. Inferno begins after the marine climbs off Deimos to the surface. The marine fights his way through hell and defeats the spider mastermind that planned the invasion. A hidden doorway back to earth opens for the hero, who has proven too tough for hell to contain. However, a burning city and a rabbit's head impaled on a stake, named in the ultimate doom as the marine's pet rabbit, Daisy, show that the demons have invaded Earth, setting the stage for. In Thy Flesh Consumed, the marine fights the demons on Earth through a variety of disconnected high-tech bases and demonic temples, though ultimately the forces of hell prevail in the invasion of Earth. In May 1992, ID Software released Wolfenstein 3D later called the grandfather of 3D shooters, specifically first-person shooters, because it established fast-paced action and technical prowess commonly expected in the genre and greatly increased the genre's popularity. Immediately following its release most of the ID software team began work on a set of episodes for the game, titled Spear of Destiny, while ID co-founder and lead programmer John Carmack instead focused on technology research for the company's next game. Following the release of Spear of Destiny in September 1992, the team began to plan their next title. They wanted to create another 3D game using a new engine Carmack was developing, but were largely tired of Wolfenstein. They initially considered making another game in the Commander Keen series, as proposed by co-founder and lead designer Tom Hall, but decided that the platforming gameplay of the series was a poor fit for Carmack's fast-paced 3D engines. Additionally, the other two co-founders of ID, designer John Romero and lead artist Adrian Carmack, wanted to create something in a darker style than the Keen games. John Carmack then came up with his own concept, a game about using technology to fight demons, inspired by the Dungeons and Dragons campaigns the team played, combining the styles of Evil Dead 2 and Aliens. The concept originally had a working title of Green and Pissed, but Carmack soon named the proposed game after a line in the film The Color of Money, What's in the Case? In here? Doom. The team agreed to pursue the Doom concept, and development began in November 1992. The initial development team was composed of five people, programmers John Carmack and Romero, artists Adrian Carmack and Kevin Cloud, and designer Hall. They moved offices to a dark office building, which they named Suite 666, and drew inspiration from the noises coming from the dentist's office next door. They also decided to cut ties with Apogee Software, their previous publisher, and to instead self-publish Doom. Early in development, rifts in the team began to appear. At the end of November Hall delivered a design document, which he named the Doom Bible, that described the plot, backstory, and design goals for the project. His design was a science fiction horror concept wherein scientists on the moon open a portal that aliens emerge from. Over a series of levels the player discovers that the aliens are demons while Hell steadily infects the level design over the course of game. John Carmack not only disliked the idea but dismissed the idea of having a story at all, 
story in a game is like story in a porn movie, it's expected to be there, but it's not that important. Rather than a deep story, he wanted to focus on the technological innovations of the game, dropping the levels and episodes of Wolfenstein in favor of a fast, continuous world. Tom disliked the idea, but the rest of the team sided with Carmack. Hall spent the next few weeks reworking the Doom Bible to work with Carmack's technological ideas. Hall was forced to rework it again in December, however, after the team decided that they were unable to create a single, seamless world with the hardware limitations of the time, which contradicted much off the document. At the start of 1993, ID put out a press release, touting Hall's story about fighting off demons while knee-deep in the dead. The press release proclaimed the new game features that John Carmack had created, as well as other features, including multiplayer gaming features, that had not yet even been designed. Early versions of the game were built to match the Doom Bible, a pre-alpha version of the first level included Hall's introductory base scene. Initial versions of the game also retained arcade elements present in Wolfenstein 3D, like score points and score items, but those were removed early in development as they felt not in keeping with the tone of the game. Other elements, such as a complex user interface, an inventory system, a secondary shield protection, and lives were modified and slowly removed over the course of development. Soon, however, the Doom Bible as a whole was rejected. Romero wanted a game even more brutal and fast than Wolfenstein, which did not leave room for the character driven plot Hall had created. Additionally, the team felt it emphasized realism over entertaining gameplay, and they did not see the need for a design document at all. Some ideas were retained, but the story was dropped and most of the game design was removed. By spring of 1993, levels were being created for the game and a demo was produced. John Carmack and Romero, however, disliked Hall's military base inspired level design. Romero especially felt that the boxy, flat level designs were uninspiring, too similar to Wolfenstein, and did not show off everything the engine cooled do. He began to create his own, more abstract levels for the game, which the rest of the team felt were much better. Hall was upset with the reception to his designs and how little impact he was having as the lead designer. He was also upset with how much he was having to fight with John Carmack in order to get what he saw as obvious gameplay improvements, such as flying enemies, and began to spend less time at work. In July, the other founders of ID fired Hall, who went to work for Apogee. He was replaced in September, 10 weeks before the game was released, by game designer Sandy Peterson. The team also added a third programmer, Dave Taylor. Peterson and Romero designed the rest of the levels for Doom, with different teams. The team felt that Peterson's designs were more technically interesting and varied, while Romero's were more aesthetically interesting. In the fall, after the multiplayer component was coded, the development team began playing four player multiplayer games matches, which Romero termed Deathmatch. According to Romero, the game's Deathmatch mode was inspired by fighting games such as Fatal Fury and Art of Fighting. Doom was programmed largely in the ANSI C programming language with a few elements done in assembly language. Development was done on Next computers running the Next Step operating system. The data used by the game engine, including both level designs and graphics files, are all stored in WAD files, short for Where's All the Data. This allows for any part of the game's design to be easily changed without needing to adjust engine code. Carmack designed the system specifically to enable fans to be able to easily modify the game. He had been impressed by the modifications made by fans of Wolfenstein 3D, and wanted to support that with an easily swappable file structure along with releasing the map editor online. Unlike Wolfenstein, which had flat levels with walls at right angles, the Doom engine allows for walls and floors at any angle or height, though two traversable areas cannot be on top of each other. The lighting system was based on adjusting the color palette of surfaces directly, rather than calculating how light traveled from light sources to surfaces using ray tracing. The game calculates the light level of a small section of a level based on its distance from light sources. It then modifies the color palette of that section's surface textures to mimic how dark it would look. This same system is used to cause faraway surfaces to look darker than close ones. Romero came up with new ways to use Carmack's lighting engine such as strobe lights. He also programmed engine features such as switches and movable stairs and platforms. After Romero's level designs started to cause problems with the engine, Carmack began to use binary space partitioning to quickly select the portion of a level that the player could see at a given time. Taylor, along with programming other features into the game, added cheat codes, some, such as IDS Bispipt, 
were based on ideas their fans had come up with while eagerly awaiting the game. Adrian Carmack was the lead artist for Doom, with Kevin Cloud as an additional artist. They designed the monsters to be nightmarish, their intent was to have graphics that were realistic and dark as opposed to staged or rendered, so a mixed media approach was taken to the artwork. The artists sculpted models of some of the enemies, and took pictures of them in stop motion from 5 to 8 different angles so that they could be rotated realistically in game. The images were then digitized and converted to 2D characters with a program written by John Carmack. Adrian Carmack made clay models for a few demons, and had Gregor Punchatz build latex and metal sculptures of the others. The weapons were toys, with parts combined from different toys to make more guns. They scanned themselves as well, using Cloud's arm as the model fourth player character's arm holding a gun, and Adrian's snakeskin boots and wounded knee for in game textures. Like they had for Wolfenstein 3D. ID hired Bobby Prince to create the music and sound effects. Romero directed Prince to make the music in techno and metal styles. Many of the songs were directly inspired by songs from popular metal bands such as Alice in Chains and Pantera. Prince himself felt that more ambient music would work better for the game and produced numerous tracks in both styles in the hopes of convincing the team. Romero, however, still liked the metal tracks and put both styles in the game. Prince did not make music for specific levels, as they were composed before the levels were completed. Instead, Romero assigned each track to each level late in development. Unlike the music, the sound effects were the enemies and weapons were created by Prince for specific purposes. Prince designed them based on short descriptions or concept art of a monster or weapon, and then adjusted fee sound effects to match the completed animations. The sound effects for the monsters were created from animal noises, and Prince designed all the sound effects to be distinct on the limited sound hardware of the time, even when many sound effects were playing at once. Because ID planned to self-publish the game, as the game neared completion they had to set up the systems to sell the game. J. Wilbur, who had been brought on as CEO and sole member of the business team, planned the marketing and distribution of Doom. He felt that the mainstream press was uninterested in the game, and as ID would make the most money off of copies they sold directly to customers, up to 85% of the planned 40 US dollar price, he decided to leverage the shareware market as much as possible, buying only a single ad in any gaming magazine. Instead, he reached out directly to software retailers, offering them copies of the first Doom episode for free, allowing them to charge any price for it, in order to spur customer interest in buying the full game directly from ID. Doom's original release date was the third quarter of 1993, which the team did not meet. By December 1993, the team was working non-stop on the game, with several employees sleeping at the office. Programmer Dave Taylor claimed that working on the game gave him such a rush that he would pass out from the intensity. It began receiving calls from people interested in the game or angry that it had missed its planned release date, as hype for the game had been building online. At midnight on December 10, 1993, after working for 30 straight hours, the development team at ID uploaded the first episode of the game to the internet, letting interested players distribute it for them. So many users were connected to the first network that they planned to upload the game to, the University of Wisconsin Parkside FTP network, that even after the network administrator increased the number of connections while on the phone with Wilbur, ID was unable to connect, forcing them to kick all other users off to allow ID to upload the game. When the upload finished 30 minutes later, 10,000 people attempted to download the game at once, crashing the university's network. The popularity of Doom led to the development of an expanded version, The Ultimate Doom, 1995, which includes a fourth episode. Additionally, numerous ports of the game have been released by other companies. An unofficial port of Doom to Linux was released by ID programmer Dave Taylor in 1994, it was hosted by ID but not supported or made official. Official ports of Doom were released for Amiga OS in 1993, 32X, Atari Jaguar, and Mac OS in 1994, Super Nintendo Entertainment System, PlayStation, and Windows in 1995, 3DO in 1996, Sega Saturn in 1997, Game Boy Advance in 2001, Xbox 360 in 2006, iOS in 2009, and PlayStation 3 in 2012. Some of these were bestsellers even many years after the initial release. Doom has additionally been ported unofficially to numerous platforms, so many ports exist, including Esoterra such as smart thermostats and oscilloscopes, that variations on it runs Doom or can it run Doom? are long-running phrases. 
Notes The ability for others to create custom levels and otherwise modify the game using WAD files turned out to be a popular aspect of Doom. Gaining the first large mod-making community, Doom affected the culture surrounding first-person shooters, and also the industry. Several future professional game designers started their careers making Doom WADs as a hobby, among them Tim Willits, who later became the lead designer at ID Software. The first level editors appeared in early 1994, and additional tools have been created that allow most aspects of the game to be edited. Although the majority of WADs contain one or several custom levels mostly in the style of the original game, others implement new monsters and other resources, and heavily alter the gameplay. Several popular movies, television series, other video games, and other brands from popular culture have been turned into Doom WADs by fans, including Aliens, Star Wars, The Simpsons. South Park, Sailor Moon, Dragon Ball Z, Pokemon, Beavis and Butthead, Batman, and Sonic the Hedgehog. Some works, like the theme Doom patch, combined enemies from several films, such as Aliens, Predator, and The Terminator. Some add-on files were also made that changed the sounds made by the various characters and weapons. Around 1994 and 1995, WADs were primarily distributed online over bulletin board systems or sold in collections on compact discs in computer shops, sometimes bundled with editing guidebooks. FTP servers became the primary method in later years. A few WADs have been released commercially, including the master levels for Doom 2, which was released in 1995 along with Maximum Doom, a CD containing 1,830 WADs that had been downloaded from the Internet. Several thousand WADs have been created in total. The ID Games FTP archive contains over 18,000 files, and this represents only a fraction of the complete output of Doom fans. Third-party programs were also written to handle the loading of various SWADs, since the game is a DOS game and all commands had to be entered on the command line to run. A typical launcher would allow the player to select which files to load from a menu, making it much easier to start. In 1995, Wizardworks released the D. Zone pack featuring hundreds of levels for Doom and Doom 2. D. Zone was reviewed in Dragon by J and D. J gave the pack 1 out of 5 stars, while D gave the pack 1 and a half stars. Within hours of Doom's release, university networks were banning Doom multiplayer games, as a rush of players overwhelmed their systems. After being alerted by network administrators the morning after release that the game's deathmatch network connection setup was crippling some computer networks, John Carmack quickly released a patch to change it, though many administrators had to implement Doom specific rules to keep their networks from crashing due to the overwhelming traffic. The game became a major problem at workplaces both occupying the time of employees and clogging computer networks. Intel, Lotus Development, and Carnegie Mellon University were among many organizations reported to form policies specifically disallowing Doom playing during work hours. At the Microsoft campus, Doom was by one account equal to a religious phenomenon. Doom was number one on Computer Gaming World's Playing Lately? Survey for February 1994. One reader said that no other game even compares to the addictiveness of Neptune with four devious players. The only game I've stayed up 72 plus straight hours to play, while another reported that linking four people together for a game of Doom is the quickest way to destroy a productive, boring evening of work. In late 1995, Doom was estimated to be installed on more computers worldwide than Microsoft's new operating system Windows 95, despite million-dollar advertising campaigns for Windows 95. The game's popularity caused Microsoft to hire ID Software to port Doom to Windows with the Wing API, and Bill Gates briefly considered buying the company. Microsoft developed a Windows 95 port of Doom to promote the operating system as a gaming platform. The development team in this effort was led by then-employee Gabe Newell. One Windows 95 promotional video had Bill Gates digitally superimposed it into the game. Although Peterson said that it was nothing more than the computer equivalent of Whack-A-Mole, Doom received critical acclaim and was widely praised at Dean the Gaming Press, broadly considered to be one of the most important and influential titles in gaming history. Upon release, Games Master gave it a 90% rating. Dragon gave it 5 stars, praising the improvements over Wolfenstein 3D, the fast-moving arcade shoot-em-up gameplay, and network play. A common criticism of Doom was that it was not a true 3D game, since the game engine did not allow corridors and rooms to be stacked on top of one another room over room, and instead relied on graphical trickery to make it appear that the player character and enemies were moving along differing elevations. 
Computer Gaming World stated in February 1994 that Wolfenstein 3D fans should look forward to a delight of insomnia, and since networking is supported, bring along a friend to share in the visceral delights. A longer review in March 1994 said that Doom was worth the wait, a wonderfully involved and engaging game, and its technology a new benchmark for the gaming industry. The reviewer praised the simply dazzling graphics, and reported that death matches may be the most intense gaming experience available today. While criticizing the ho-hum end game with a too easy end boss, he concluded that Doom is a virtuoso performance. Edge gave it a 7 tenths rating, criticizing the fairly simple 3D perspective maze adventure slash shoot 'em up gameplay but praising the graphics and levels. In 1994, PC Gamer UK named Doom the third best computer game of all time. The editors wrote, although it's only been around for a couple of months, Doom has already done more to establish the PC's arcade cloud than any other title in gaming history. In 1994 Computer Gaming World named Doom Game of the Year. In 1995, Next Generation said it was the most talked about PC game ever, and with good reason. Running on a 486 machine, essential for maximum effect, Doom took PC graphics to a totally new level of speed, detail, and realism, and provided a genuinely scary degree of immersion in the game world. In 1996 Computer Gaming World ranked it as the fifth best video game of all time, and the third most innovative game. In 1998, PC Gamer declared it the 34th best computer game ever released, and the editors called it probably the most imitated game of all time. Doom continued what Wolfenstein 3D began and elevated the fledgling 3D shooter genre to blockbuster status. In 2001, Doom was voted the number one game of all time in a poll among over 100 game developers and journalists conducted by GameSpy. In 2003, IGN ranked it as the 44th top video game of all time and also called it the breakthrough game of 1,993 inches, adding, its arsenal of powerful guns, name live shotgun and BFG, intense level of gore and perfect balance of adrenaline-soaked action and exploration kept this gamer riveted for years. PC Gamer proclaimed Doom the most influential game of all time in its 10-year anniversary issue in April 2004. In 2004, readers of Retro Gamer voted Doom as the ninth top retro game, with the editors commenting, only a handful of games can claim that they've changed the gaming world, and Doom is perhaps the most qualified of them all. In 2005, IGN ranked it as the 39th top game. On March 12, 2007, the New York Times reported that Doom was named to a list of the 10 most important video games of all time, the so-called game canon. The Library of Congress took up this video game preservation proposal and began with the games from this list. In 2009, game trailers ranked Doom as number one breakthrough PC game. That year Game Informer put Doom 6th on the magazine's list of the games of all time, stating that it gave the genre the kickstart it needed to rule the gaming landscape two decades later. Game Informer staff also put it sixth on their 2001 list of the 100 best games ever. IGN included Doom at second place in the top 100 video game shooters of all time, just behind Half-Life, citing the game's feel of running and gunning, memorable weapons and enemies, pure and simple fun and it's spreading on nearly every gaming platform in existence. In 2012, Time named it one of the 100 greatest video games of all time as it established the look and feel of later shooters as surely as Xerox Park established the rules of the virtual desktop, adding that its impact also owes a lot to the gonzo horror sensibility of its designers, including John Romero, who showed a bracing lack of restraint in their deployment of gore and satanic iconography. Including Doom on the list of the greatest games of all time, GameSpot wrote that despite its numerous appearances in other formats and on other media, Long-time fans will forever remember the original 1993 release of Doom as the beginning of a true revolution in action gaming. The game was ported to numerous console gaming platforms both domestically and abroad where it maintained its popularity, receiving generally favorable critical reception. With the release of Doom, ID Software, quickly found itself making $100,000 daily with shareware copies sold at $9. Sandy Peterson later remarked that the game sold a couple of hundred thousand copies during its first year or so, as piracy kept its initial sales from rising higher. Experts estimate that the game sold approximately 2 to 3 million physical copies from its release through 1999. According to PC Data, which tracked sales in the United States, 
The Doom Shareware edition sold 1.15 million copies by September 1999. The Ultimate Doom SKU reached sales of 787,397 units by that date. At the time, PC Data ranked them as the country's 8th and 20th best selling computer games since January 1993. In addition to its sales, the game's status as shareware dramatically increased its market penetration. PC's own S. David McCandless wrote that the game was played by an estimated 6 million people across the globe, while other sources estimate that 10-20 million people played Doom within 24 months of its launch. Doom was notorious for its high levels of graphic violence and satanic imagery, which generated controversy from a broad range of groups. Doom for the Genesis 32X was among one of the first video games to be given an M for mature rating from the entertainment software rating board Duetto its violent gore and nature. Yahoo! Games listed it as one of the top 10 most controversial games of all time. It was criticized by religious organizations for its diabolic undertones and was dubbed a mass murder simulator by critic and killology research group founder David Grossman. Doom prompted fears that the then-emerging virtual reality technology could be used to simulate extremely realistic killing. The game again sparked controversy throughout a period of school shootings in the United States when it was found that Eric Harris and Dylan Kleepold, who committed the Columbine High School massacre on April 20, 1999, were avid players of the game. While planning for the massacre, Harris said in his journal that the killing would be like playing Doom, and it'll be like the LA riots, the Oklahoma bombing, World War II, Vietnam, Duke Nukem and Doom all mixed together, and that his shotgun was straight out of the game. A rumor spread afterwards that Harris had assigned a Doom level that looked like the high school populated with representations of Harris's classmates and teachers, and that Harris practiced for his role in the shootings by playing the level over and over. Although Harris did design Doom levels, which later became known as the Harris levels, none have been found to be based on Columbine High School. In the release versions before 1.2 to 1.4, the game has been banned in Germany due to a swastika in E1M4. The ban was lifted after ID Software changed the swastika, and said that it was the homage of Wolfenstein 3D. Doom has appeared in several forms in addition to video games, including a Doom comic book, four novels by David Abhu and Brad Lana Weaver, loosely based on events and locations in the games, and a live-action film starring Carl Urban and The Rock released in 2005. The game's development and impact on popular culture is also the subject of the book by David Kushner. The Doom series remained dormant between 1997 and 2000, when Doom 3 would finally be announced. A retelling of the original Doom using entirely new graphics technology and a slower-paced survival horror approach, Doom 3 was hyped to provide as large a leap in realism and interactivity as the original game and helped renew interest in the franchise when it was released in 2004, under the ID Tech 4 game engine. The series would again remain dormant for 10 years until a remake, simply titled Doom and running on the new ID Tech 6, was announced with a beta access to players that had pre-ordered. The game held its closed alpha multiplayer testing in October 2015, as closed and open beta access ran during March to April 2016. Returning to the series' roots in fast-paced action and minimal storytelling, the full game eventually released worldwide on May 13, 2016. The project initially started as Doom 4 in May 2008, set to be a remake of Doom 2, Hell on Earth and ditching the survival horror aspect of Doom 3. Development completely restarted as ID's Tim Willits remarked that Doom 4 was lacking the personality of the long-running shooter franchise. Doom was influential and dozens of new first-person shooter titles appeared following Doom release, and they were often referred to as Doom clones rather than first-person shooters. The term Doom Clone was used to describe the style of gameplay in Doom-like games. While the term was initially popular, it was, after 1996, gradually replaced by first-person shooter, and the phrase first-person shooter had firmly superseded Doom Clone around 1998. Some of these were certainly clones, hastily assembled and quickly forgotten, while others explored new grounds of the genre and were highly acclaimed. Many of the game's closely imitated features in Doom such as the selection of weapons and cheat codes. Doom principal rivals were Apogee's Rise of the Triad and Looking Glass Studios' System Shock. The popularity of Star Wars-themed WADs is rumored to have been the factor that prompted LucasArts to create their first-person shooter Dark Forces. The Doom game engine was licensed by ID Software to several other companies, who released their own games using the technology, including Heretic, Strive, Quest for the Sigil, and Husks, Twitch and Kill.
A Doom-based game called Chex Quest was released in 1996 by Ralston Foods as a promotion to increase cereal sales, and the United States Marine Corps released Marine Doom. When 3D Realms released Duke Nukem 3D in 1996, a tongue-in-cheek science fiction shooter based on Ken Silverman's technologically similar build engine, ID Software was nearly finished developing Quake, its next-generation game, which mirrored Doom's success for much of the remainder of the 1990s and reduced interest in its predecessor, Wolfenstein 3D. In addition to the thrilling nature of the single-player game, the deathmatch mode was an important factor in the game's popularity. Doom was not the first first-person shooter with a deathmatch mode, Maze War, an FPS released in 1974, was running multiplayer deathmatch over Ethernet and Xerox computers by 1977. The widespread distribution of PC systems and the violence in Doom made deathmatching particularly attractive. Two player multiplayer was possible over a phone line by using a modem, or by linking two PCs with a null modem cable. Because of its widespread distribution, Doom hence became the game that introduced deathmatching to a large audience and was also the first game to have the term deathmatch. Although the popularity of the Doom games dropped with the release of more modern first-person shooters, the game still retains a strong fan base that continues to this day by playing competitively and creating wads, and Doom-related news is still tracked at multiple websites such as Doomworld. Interest in Doom was renewed in 1997, when the source code for the Doom engine was released, it was also placed under the GNU General Public License on October 3, 1999. Fans then began porting the game to various operating systems, even to previously unsupported platforms such as the Dreamcast. As for the PC, over 50 different Doom Source ports have been developed. New features such as OpenGL rendering and scripting allow odds to alter the gameplay more radically. Devoted players have spent years creating speedruns for Doom, competing for the quickest completion times and sharing knowledge about routes through levels and how to exploit bugs in the Doom engine for shortcuts. Achievements include the completion of both Doom and Doom 2 on the ultra-violence difficulty setting in less than 30 minutes each. In addition, a few players have also managed to complete Doom 2 in a single run on the difficulty setting Nightmare, on which monsters are more aggressive, launch faster projectiles, or, in the case of the Pinky Demon, simply move faster, and respawn roughly 30 seconds after they have been killed. Level designer John Romero characterized the idea of such a run as, just having to be, impossible. Movies of most of these runs are available from the CompetN website. Online co-op and deathmatch play are still continued on fan-created services. In 2016, John Romero created and published two new Doom levels, E1M4B, Phobos Mission Control, and E1M8B, Tech Gone Bad. In 2018, for the 25th anniversary of Doom, Romero announced an unofficial fifth episodic pack of nine levels. The fifth episode is titled Sigil of the Baphomet. The music for the fifth episode is composed entirely by Buckethead. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.